Hello and welcome to Sharon Local History Channel. I would like to tell you about how basically the town of Sharon took care of poor people. I will concentrate on an area which is part of Moose Hill Audubon now. Um, there used to be an old farm that was basically a poor farm eventually. There are a few ways to approach this area. Either you park at Moose Hill Audubon, uh, Sharon residents can park for free, and walk to Vernal Loop, or you can approach it from Everett Street. However, um, I wouldn't recommend parking there, or from the other side where Warner Trail is. Here is a little map. I took just a few short videos how the area looks like now. I will do a mix of videos and pictures. And I will read you an article that I found written by Claire Foreman, where she explains the history of the poor farm. The poor people, or those who may not be able to sustain their daily needs, um, are listed in our earliest records. Not everyone was allowed to settle in Sharon, or to town fathers, in what seems a harsh and illicit policy, decided who could or could not come to live in Sharon. Their policy was based on whether or not the person or family applying could maintain themselves. If the selectmen feared that the person family would become a liability requiring town fund for their maintenance, they would deny permission to settle. Those already settled, but who felt on hard times, such as widows, orphans, and the feeble were farmed out to the lowest bidder. Bidders were townsmen who offered to care for the unfortunate at a set rate for the year. For example, a bidder would state, I will care for the widow white for the coming year for X amount of money. The bidder would collect the money from the selectman and become the custodian of the person bid out for the year. Any expenses incurred over the year for the keeping of the person, such as medicine, clothing, food and even funeral expenses, would have to be provided from this amount or covered by the bidder from his own pocket. This practice continued in Sharon until um, 1860s. The town acquired the homestead of the deacon Oliver Everett and established the town almhouse or poor farm. This was quite an extensive farm located on Moose Hill near the Sharon Sanatorium. Most of the food from the inhabitants of the town poor farm was raised on the farm by the overseer of the poor with as much assistance in labor as the inhabitants were capable of. Surplus produce, milk, eggs, poultry and farm products were sold. The largest customer for the surplus of the farm was the Sharon Sanitorium. All items not used by required by the inhabitants of the town poor farm were provided by the taxpayers of the town. The overseers of the town poor farm were the selectmen and as a result there were accounts of the running of this farm in the town reports from 1860 to 1919. It is important to remember that um, almost 200 years ago any family could really fell upon hard times and the town tried their best to take care of them. They tried different options and this poor farm um, originally was conceived as a place in which the orphans and the destitute of Sharon could work and um, help the, the people could support themselves. Two factors changed um, the status of the poor farm from a beneficial hospice to an unpopular solution. The first was the acceptance of non-Sharon residents, transients at the farm, the second was the expense of operation when the inmates, they were called inmates, were but mere children who were better placed in private homes. At the 1919 town meeting, a decision was made to sell this property. As many supporters there were for the farm, there were just as many who wished to see the drain of their tax dollar cease. 
For this reason, many letters to editor were written before this fateful decision, down decision. I will post examples of some of these letters. Please use the pause button to read them. So we know that eventually the uh, poor farm was closed and um, the town found other ways how to take care of poor. I don't want to get into it at this point. I just wanted to tell you about this property and when you go for a hike and you see the stone foundations, you would know a little bit about its history. As you can see from the videos, the farm is long gone, but obviously life continues and somebody started living in those rocks again. This is the end of our short video. Thank you for watching Sharon Local History. Feel free to subscribe to our channel.